Hey guys, a little warning before we start the video. The final boss has a lot of flickering lights and due to something with the game engine, a bunch of flickering textures. So if you are photosensitive, you may want to skip past it. I'll put in the chapters. With that out of the way, we can start the video. Welcome back to Let's Play Hand of Fate. Again you face me. Again you are a fool. Maybe so. But this fool has gotten pretty far. For defeating all twelve of the court, and getting the four symbols of power, our new enemy appears. Not really much of a surprise. Uh, we're going up against the dealer himself, the 13th enemy. The dealer is nasty. We're not going to get any more blessings. And the dealer's curse is just more curses all the time. There he is, staring at us, like he stares at us every level of endless mode. And we have quite a few challenges ahead. You face me now for the ultimate prize. I offer no mercy. Very quick look at the deck builder. To show that against the dealer, we're going back to the default, like we started. I've slotted in, I've slotted in some new equipment. A bunch of things we haven't seen. A lot of new helms, only new shields, and a whole bunch of new weapons. We'll see about whether they show up. Encounters is a mix of some new and some old. There are a couple tokens in there to get. I don't expect to see too many of them, but hey, if we're lucky, why not? We'll be going with uh, some of the encounters from a couple fates we've unlocked so far. Sorry, a couple fates we've finished the encounter of so far. So hey, let's give this a go and give the dealer a run for his money. You face me. The rules change yet again. I worked long and hard to make that particularly painful. Ingenious, don't you think? You are so close to victory and I am so close to the final nothingness. I have fought against this day for so long. Depth of Night is actually a pretty interesting piece As of armor. Is you. The ability to redraw enemies is both good and really bad, because you might get enemies that aren't right for the encounter they should be. And also, you noticed, we didn't keep our blessing. We're not going to be keeping any blessings. It's just going to be too hard. Unfortunately, the curses are also really expensive. That dealer's curse would be fantastic to get rid of. It's a little bit lucky that I managed to get Hungry Blades off early. Not all the curses are bad, and at some point you just have to give up. But any curse you can get rid of, I find great. Sunken treasure was obtained from the Kraken encounters, the Murdered Sea DLC. We could go searching for treasure if we had gold, but as we don't, all we can really do is move on. A challenge for you, and a token if you succeed. That card will be haunting me for a long time. Now 
Now I could redraw here. Uh, but redrawing could actually get more deadly enemies. And honestly, Lava Golem is not a bad single enemy to fight. A little extra health, but it is only a momentary respite. I'm sure you are grateful for that. Imagination and illusion. Spells without weight and meaning. Yet they can wrap you in ribbons as easily as any other. Devilish Traps is a really annoying trap card unique to this story dungeon. We've already seen traps uh, with the goblins. These are even worse. So first off, the camera is a little bit weird there. And you notice, those are all trapped bushes. And we also have these totem statues that fire out in front of them, but they're placed at weird angles. Also, doing this on a keyboard, you can only go in eight directions. It's a little harder to go fine-grained. And uh, you find yourself kind of going in between all these uh, turning traps. And see here? Four. You don't dodge quickly out of the way. You might end yourself on the uh, bad end of a really pointy stick. That one wasn't too bad. That is the curse that ends your quest. Cursed luck is rough. I did try to... I made my wager. I'll also make my deal. You have questions and I will... I did try to stack the deck a little bit more towards fights rather than chance, but... Uh, chance will still be hard. We play for a token now. Soldiers on leave... Uh, requires you to have a helmet as you come across soldiers that appropriately want helmets and you can give a helmet three times and eventually get the token we did not start as a fate we have no helmet right now so this will be unlocked later Master Ring is very nice. Plus one gold per ring can be very useful, and I did it in another run. Ring of Poverty is circumstantial, though, and being able to sell the ring and get stuff out of it sounds cool, but I do want to stack up gold and have gold available more than anything. In the end, the chance of having a little bit more food later is uh, what catches my eye here. Now, very quickly, this is why I redraw is bad. Our queen and her reptilian brood persist. I'm going to be skipping this fight, but normally you would have bandits here. Having the queen of scales and ranged fire and uh, shields on the lizardmen makes it a lot harder to get your combo up to 30. <laughs> on top of that, the uh, hellspawn have unblockable attacks. Just about the only saving grace of this fight is that the Queen's Totem can't be moved. It's a good target to wail on, but uh, that was not a smart redraw.
The presence of power tends to exert a certain pressure upon the world. Soul Gem is a new encounter, which has three very useful uh, outcomes. And in this case, removing a random curse sounds much more useful. And already, blessings are possible again. Dealer's curse would have been fantastic to remove, but any random curse here removed is great. I was a little greedy. Uh, that nearly ended me. But it did provide me. This shield was created by a master craftsman, but is draconic in name only. It is merely magic at work here. With a fantastic shield. And more dragon equipment. So the dragon set is all about fire. Clad like the fabled beast. Every part in perfect harmony. And this helm has its peak. You can read the descriptions. The Blade of the Beast. Few can compare to its powers. And I've tested the Dragon Tongue in a few other runs. The Dragon Tongue is an amazing weapon Caves and, and can be the linchpin of a One run. cannot hope to find adventure without a little delving now. As long as you play and persist, we will continue to draw closer to a resolution. Very few have come close to unraveling the game, mind you. And none have succeeded. The world is but surface. Behind it, Mr. Ah, this is unfortunate. This would be a perfect type for Secret Society since you need to have four curses more than blessings, but we are actually at three curses because I randomly removed one. So we're just going to content ourselves with uh, doing battle practice. I may have explained it before, but battle practice lets you fight um, any enemy in the game. No, oh, I don't want to redraw this at all. Uh, and one thing you can do is, well, battle the Lich. And as I found out, battling the Lich in battle practice is a fantastically easy thing to do, as long as you don't step in the Lich's fire. Because you'll notice, with nothing to focus on, as long as you actually bother dodging the Lich's fireballs, or just reflect them, the Lich can't do anything to you. And the fire from the uh, Dragon Tongue? is amazingly powerful. Hmm. Could take the fairy now. But there's a treasure chest down there. And with enough food... Although I can't uncover anything, chance at equipment is uh, pretty good. Dragon Claws synergize very well with the rest of the dragon set, and uh, since we can shoot fire, we want to have a weapon cooldown uh, reduction. Choose from these options. Ouch. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Uh, no lock, and you see the kind of wavy thing? That That's the mouse. That wasn't really worth it. But the uh, jeweler might now be, since we have enough gold.
I've seen it cheaper, but now's the time to get the master ring. One ring empowered by all other rings. It is only regrettable that you have so few fingers. I'm uh, selling some of my equipment here to get more food. Since I did have a ring that allows me to do that. And I don't think I'm going to suffer from equipment loss. There's a little bit of a chance element to that, but more food is good. And I don't need my old equipment. Now I'm set to get more uh, money from the dungeon too. Which is very good. See that plus five at the end of the encounter? There is a curse in this dungeon, which is not very nice. This I isn't it. your ingenuity. I look forward to seeing how you approach this particular challenge. As long as you play and persist, we will continue to draw closer to a resolution. Very few have come close to unraveling the game, mind you. And none have succeeded. The Elder Lizard came from the Murder at Sea DLC. It is a card which serves to give you a bunch of gains if and only if you have Metal Ore. Iron Ore. Which is right there, right below. If I had gone the card below first, I would have had a really, really nice time with the Elder Lizard. Oh, that's unlucky. So let's just take a look at the shop and console ourselves. Clairvoyant Helm. Uh, that could be good. I don't need a gauntlet. The Oracle's diadem is also a very nice thing. Being able to see encounters around you is something I've done. Insight into the wheels of chance that may but I think I chance. actually prefer seeing so negative well. outcomes and chance cards. Like this. Doesn't mean the outcome will be good, but uh, it's a chance. Very nice indeed. I'm sure you're grateful for that. Thanks to defeating the Kraken, Ghost Lucy is here as a freebie. And any health gain is very useful, even if it, lo it looks like a small amount. Because here we go. What traps can you contend with? More traps. And the dialogue is slightly different, too. But it seems to suggest that all of this is in our mind. This second room is a room I actually got in a different run. It is identical. All of these totems can shoot at you. And if you just run into them like that, or you don't know what's coming at you, it's gonna hurt. As are these two walls. And what they don't tell you is that the totems can shoot from both sides.
holy quest came from the monk fate. In the monk fate, we defeated a skeleton king as an entourage. And in holy quest, we get the chance to go down in the tombs again to try to find an item. The best result will give us an item from the skeleton king set. Uh, we might also just get a game card after fighting a monster, or worse. That's just worse. We still get some of the money back, though, thanks to our ring. But before we go down, time to uh, tempt fate again. Yeah, any food per blessing card is useless to us right now. In fact, it's unlikely we're going to get another. Now this is a weird one. I got this uh, on uh, one of my first runs in this dungeon, right at the beginning. What brings you to play the game? Ha, I know you will not tell me. Like all the rest, you are silent. The lovers let us loot the more rings which we have a ring that affects us on a per ring basis. So it's fantastic. And maybe... Eh, we won't get off so easily. Mages are easy, though. I think I'll do a little loop and then go back around. Now it is only a matter of time before you fall. Now I do have enough money for a loan. If I have to eat my gold, then it might help out in the long run. Cursed luck is honestly one of the things I want to remove the most, but Midas Appetite is also nice to remove if I get more food. But I have enough things to generate actual gold on me right now with the rings that I just want more luck. Dreams, myth, and mystery. Oh, and traps, of course. Yeah. Three in a run is no fun. This one seems to set off a little easier as I run into the flames. But the timings are set there just to trip you up. I can assure you dodging into the flames was not intentional. It just ended up that way. And the timing on these three crushing platforms is also really nasty if you don't know what to expect, since they work independently. But we had three, uh, so we've actually survived them. You must find food. Now. Uh, it would be good to go for the apprentice right now, but head downwards. We don't really have need of the other cards there so much. Another curse on the table. Let us see how you deal with it. Oof. Nasty. But I've actually sold most of what I need, although we have a shop here. Your final foe. Soon we will meet. Regardless of who wins, 
know that I have enjoyed the game. So it's time to do a little something interesting here. Because um, we have an effect we've been holding on to. The first, need to check the shop for a couple things, see if there's anything of interest at all. I don't have a huge amount of money. I could get a helm if I really wanted to, though I have one. Immovable object would be a fantastic thing to have for the dealer. But I can't sell. And I also want to heal up a bit. I have enough gold to heal up. I can walk back and forth. And if you recall, there's a little effect. Yeah, see? Depths of Night is all I have. An immovable object is far more useful against the dealer. Let's move back and forth. Don't need this yet. But then, our loan kicks in. And while we heal, we can suddenly afford something. And of course the shop changes. I already have a sword, but the dragon armor is another piece of the dragon set and it, as it says, leaves a trail of flame behind. And deeply tainted this flaming suit of steel. And that's not a negligible effect. Although we can't get the immovable object, the dragon armor is uh, going to be very, very useful. Just doing a quick check here to see everything I've got. Five curses, three of the dragon artifacts, clairvoyant helm, four of the dragon artifacts, sorry. There's a shield too. And a whole bunch of rings that, uh, may or may not prove useful. Out of food again. Uh, hoo -hoo. With this last visit, I think it's we're healed enough. It's time to faith the one and only. Now we fight. I had hoped it would not come to this, but I knew it must. I could have built this trap to be flawless, yet I included the seeds of my own demise. I must. You must. This is the way the world turns. Without change, there is only stagnation. Curious little comment there. Our final confrontation begins. I will not fall as easily as the other opponents you have faced. The three rulers of the Court of Dust return once more. The so the dealer has four faces. One for each of the court. And in each of the phases, you start off fighting all three of a certain suit. The Jack, the Queen, and the King of Dust are first. I'm wearing Dragon Artifacts, and they are incredibly useful, as the fire damage I'm causing is very, very powerful. You want to stack your deck with powerful weapons. Basic swords and basic maces just don't cut it here. And once you've defeated all of uh, Suit in the first phase, the dealer will do these two force attacks. Staying all the way in the back or in the front here is a uh, great way of staying away from them. I have become soft. This is your end. After those force attacks, you will be forced into some QTEs. Hit Q or the reflect button if you're on console to reflect his attack back. If you miss it, you have to dodge with space. But if you hit him, will on him a bit till he gets back up. 
again my skulls come to the fore. Fight and see if you can emerge victorious. Second phase is much like the first, but with the skulls. Use the Skeleton King's uh, bomber skeletons. He summons to your advantage if you can, but otherwise get rid of anything that can make things spawn on the battlefield. You don't have any extra traps on the battlefield, so dodging the Skeleton King is not very hard. Still, that's no reason to get complacent. And remember, the Queen uh, can fire off these grenades. It has taken me by surprise more than once. When you defeated your uh, suits in the second phase, the dealer lays down these magical lines. Just don't stay in them. Your fate ends here. As well as you have played, I say no more. You must still resist the family of rats if you wish to challenge. These guys are why I'm really glad I had the dragon tongue. The dragon tongue makes really short work of these. Thankfully, the queen seems to bug out in this fight a little bit. So, uh, your main focus is the king. Always the king. The king of plague is nasty. After that, it's the queen's totem. And the queen herself. I mean, you can just deal with her now like I did. She's not too threatening, but... She can be an annoyance. Once you've defeated the Plague Suit, the dealer will go ahead with his Force Attack 1 and lay down the lines, but make the move towards the right, about 45 degrees. He'll also do another Force Attack, stay inside the uncolored area here, and he will lay down more lines and twist them the other way, about the same amount. And then it's QT time. Fate has dealt us both an interesting hand. Let us see how it all ends. Come this far, but you must go no further. I will not leave the game in the hands of one as coarse as you. The scale suit is the one that caused me the most trouble when I got to this fight. Remember that the King of Scales has an invulnerability effect for everyone else on the battlefield, and it's easy to be caught off guard by the needles he shoots. So the first thing is to take care of the King of Scales, at all costs. Once you've got that, the order you want to take the others out in is up to you. Just be very careful that the Queen doesn't take you out with her Fireball or Fire Breath. The dealer will do another force attack and another set of lines, which will go to the right much further this time. So make sure you were on the left to start out with. He'll then go ahead and do a final force attack. Then more lines, which will turn the other direction. Give yourself enough wiggle room. At 7 HP, uh, this was not extremely pleasant. If you've made it this far, though, 
You've pretty much won the fight. No, I will not go. It cannot end like this. I think it's time to deal the dealer a winning hand. No, no. And there we go. The 12 members of the court have been killed. We went up against the dealer, and we won. And now it seems like we have taken his place against any who might come past the 13 gates for the game of life. But while this dealer is banished, the LP isn't over yet. There are still some things to explore, such as the remaining encounters in the last fates. We'll be taking a look at those in future videos. For now, enjoy the credits. And see you next time on Let's Play Hand of Fate. So You will never face me. I'm afraid that is where this round ends. Some other time.